job. Um, everything's basically been torn out. I'm not going to bother explaining the configuration because a lot of things um, have happened here prior to me getting here. Now that the plumber is done with his thing and he put in one inch copper, which is really crazy. I've never seen this in a house, but they wanted the ultimate pressure possible. And since they had one inch copper over there, they just tied off of it. Yeah, so there's a lot of, lot of, lot of details that I don't want to go into because it's not relevant to what I'm doing. What I'm doing is building a curbless shower on this slab that happens to be cracked. Um, so with everything gone, with that shower gone, this bathtub that used to be here, used to be a jacuzzi tub, so that's gone. Shower's gone. The, the two walls between the shower and the toilet closet, and this used to be a walk-in closet, and it's still going to remain a walk-in closet. It's just a different configuration of that. Uh, my thing will be causing a curbless shower with a large format tile, which I have not done yet in that this is a 12 by 24 that's going to go on the floor staggered in half and that same tile is going to run this direction and then into this slope and onto that back drain which is going to be a lineal drain going i think it's going to take up most of this room here when this wall is built which i'm going to get to in a minute and that's going to be 68 i think there's a 73 inch opening from there to there and it's going to be a 68 inch long drain that is going to set in the back right where that drain is at now which is a great position for it because it's center of this whole space. And now we get over to this wall that used to actually be a wall, but it's not anymore because that was part of the shower, right? And so now it's not part of the shower. And so there's gonna be a two by six wall because this big giant pipe, I have to make into eventually half inch and half inch and go up and have a shower valve. Then that will be half inch, half inch and half inch and go up to a shower valve. So there's gonna be a shower fixture here with a handheld wand on a bar, sliding bar, and there's going to be a replication of that on this wall when it gets built. So it's going to come out about three foot, and it's going to stop right there, and it's going to go all the way to the ceiling. So it's going to be one solid wall that's going to replicate everything on this, yeah, his and hers. And then I'm going to cut through the concrete on this line right here, right on that line going across there. I'm going to cut down and cut over that way, and then cut. Uh, I may have to cut the back a little bit, but um, it's boxed in over there as they normally do on tubs, so that's going to be a little difficult, but anyway, so I'm going to cut that down. I'm not going to take it all out because it is, I believe the plumber said it's 8 inch concrete, which is crazy for a slab, but be that as it may, I'm going to cut down probably about an inch or an inch and a half, um, so I'll have a good 3 quarter inch per foot roll down there. Um, which is what I want. I want that flat tile to go like that and then like immediately do its little thing with that slope going down to the very end. Um, and it will be the same elongated darker tile on this floor as it goes into the shower, which is really cool. Um, right up to the edge of the drain. And there might be a small piece in the back, but not very, not very big. When this uh, wall tile is done, there's going to be a niche somewhere in this area. This window is going out. This is going to get replaced. I don't. The window's not here, so I don't know what it's going to look like. But that window will get replaced, and then somewhere in this area, there's going to be a niche, a smaller niche than what I normally do. Um, and then this wall tile is going to be the marble type, 12 by 24. Um, looks like marble, uh, Carrera marble. With, I don't know. If I don't have a sample. Um, but it's going to be staggered also on the wall going up. There's not going to be any type of border. Um, actually, there's not going to be a, a bench or anything unusual than what I'm doing here. Um, but it's going to go all the way up to, if I'm not mistaken, to just past where that window is. I think 8 foot or whatever, because there's a vaulted ceiling up here, so we can't go to the ceiling. But we're going to go up um, quite a distance off of the shower head. But yeah, that'll be trimmed out with some Schluter. They wanted white Schluter, which they don't really have, white box Schluter, not the thin type. Um, or they wanted black, and they don't have the box in either. So I don't know what type of Schluter, but that Schluter is going to go, they want it up against this door trim. And so it's going to go up and over with a 45 and into the back, and then it's going to go down the edge of this wall right here. The niche is going to be a mosaic in the back of it, and then it's going to be trimmed out with some uh, pencil, some marble pencil. Um, and that's how it's going to look. So yeah, I'm going to get to uh, get busy on this. I want to build this wall first so I can do this plumbing and figure all that stuff out. So I'm back here two, about three working days later. Um, in the last couple of days I have managed to build this 2x6 um, straight wall all the way up. 
um, in order for me to find out my parameter from left to right and from front to back and all that stuff so the wall got built first um, and my apologies I don't show all the work process for a lot of different reasons I think I've mentioned that the plumber came in and did one inch lines I don't know why he chose to do that um, awesome guy I like him a lot um, Unipore is what he used on here not PEX um, he also did a bunch of that which he has the crimping tool for the copper over there so there's there's a combination there's sweat there's uh, crimps there's some sharp bites down there at the bottom I don't know if you can see them or not um, it's accessible from that side of the garage yada 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 anyway I sweated in the valve I love these valves it's a Delta the reason I like them look at that they have the shutoffs right there so if you ever need to change your cartridge um, all you have to do is just turn the screw down, hot, turn the screw down on the coal, you're good to go. Yeah, and then you cap off this end if you're only using two fixtures, which we are. This is going to be a hose attachment going on here. Don't have the nipple yet because I don't have the hose attachment. Um, this will be just a normal shower head going up. And hers and his. Same thing over here, sweated in this valve, same thing with the shutoffs. I highly recommend if you don't mind getting Delta and you're going to have um, so what normally would happen if you're going to have multiple functional shower um, you would have to put in the mixer and then you would have to put in the diverter as a separate entity and I like this setup better because it just has me sweating one time instead of multiple times um, of course then I have to manipulate this isn't soldered in yet but um, this will eventually go through that wall over there this will be that same hanging it's going to be actually on a um, on a pole, the sliding, like we used to do in the day. And this will be a shower head, same as the other side. Getting the tools. So if you're going to do a curbless shower, the, the most important thing you're going to need is a jackhammer, of course. Um, this concrete saw will make life a lot easier because you're going to have to cut out exactly where you need on the concrete to get a nice, smooth, easy transition going down eventually. Um, I'm usually going down about more or less about an inch and three quarters to two inches. I think this is two inches, or it will be. Most of it will be about two inches by the time I knock off all of this high spot. Um, and then eventually it has a nice smooth slope going down. Well, it's not now because I haven't done any mortar work. Um, but what you're going to do is get a level. You can do your measurement, which I already know what this is sitting right there on the slab. That will be the out exterior tile. There's also going to be some thin set and tile on top of there, so there's probably another quarter inch rise um, that isn't accounted for quite yet, um, although that will be negated by the fact there will be tile bumped up again. In fact, it will be the large format tile that I'm using out here that I'm going to use in here at this range here, so there will probably be about four tile going across, four and some change. Anyway, you lift up your level. Once you're on level, you check out that measurement, and that's right at about two inches, actually about two and a quarter. Um, and so I don't have anything, uh, let me get level again. I don't have anything currently in the way uh, to impede anything. Um, there, are, there are probably some high spots here that I'll knock down. Uh, front to back, I've already done the measurement, lift it up, you're about, I think I measured right there about an inch and three quarters and then it goes down to two inches eventually at level and at the back. So the only room that's going to be taken up, as I said, I'm going to knock down some of these high spots before everything is said and done. And then this is all going to get wetted up. Once that's all nice and wet, um, then I'm going to put in some um, quick setting mortar and I'm going to scrape my mortar out in such a fashion that everything goes slopes down to that direction because this lineal drain, linear drain goes I think maybe two or three inches shy of that end and two or three inches shy of that end so everything is going to slope down into that direction once all that's nice and dry probably a couple of days uh, to let it cure really well is when I'll put Schluter I have Curdy rather the fleece material so I'm going to overlap that and put that on. Th that's going to be my pan liner proper. Could you use Aqua Defense, Hydro Band, 8 plus 1 or 8 plus 9, um, Red Guard, all that stuff as your pan liner? Yes. Yes, you could. But once you put in your 2x6 gabbing and all that stuff, you still need to be able to paint all that and fill in all the cracks of the boards and all that stuff. 
so it's just easier for me to use um, the fleece material so I'm going to glue that to my nice uh, mortar bit I say mortar bed all it is is a screed for me to get a pitch and then I'm going to put the an overlap like they suggest and all that stuff but I don't trust it so yes I'm going to red, red guard over the entire thing when it's done it's going to fashion the same way as a um, rubber pan liner I'm going to still do my hospital folds in the corner I'm still going to attach it to the drain properly um, and probably do some caulking around that it's going to be a Schluter drain which I did not pick it has a fleece material attached to it that goes out all four sides and that will be wrapped down onto my um, curdy that I'm putting down you're going to need a jackhammer and you're going to need different bits so as you see here I started making holes in here so when I get my jackhammer at an angle these pop up in pretty good chunks you could just as easily take your saw which I did I think when I was over here you can cut sections but you'll have to figure out your depth and I've had a lot of problems busting through this um, in fact I noticed the other day there's like hardly any rock in fact I'm not even finding any like normally in concrete you would look at the edge of it and you would be looking at chunks of rock right where the rock at where is the rock I don't know this is a very 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 dense this is the hardest concrete I've had to jackhammer out um, and I don't know why it's so dense I don't know it's because there's no rock in it because they put more cement product in it the PSI I don't know I don't know all that stuff I do know that it's really caused me a lot of angst I think it took me pushing about four hours just to get to this point um, which is crazy and then I still have to do that part so instead of um, cutting the lines because you could potentially do a mark on your blade and just go in a certain because you don't want to go all the way there's no point in going all the way down that six inches um, but you could potentially put a mark on your blade you know cut little lines and all that stuff so when you jackhammer out it'll hit the, it'll make it weaker make it a lot easier for you to make that happen so, and I will start doing my tile on the outside so my tile stops right here and then it just kind of continues at a gradual pitch down here um, you're supposed to get about a quarter inch per foot this is just shy of four foot so that inch and three quarters is way more than enough that I, of what I need if you if you have a absolute need or desire to do one of these and go for it um, be prepared to pay a lot more um, because of all the work but if it's just one of those fun things it's like ooh, it would be cool to have a curable shower uh -uh. It's, it's not worth all the extra work and the payment that you're going to be absorbing um, to do that so there is a practical reason for that finally got this floor down to a decent level and I'm going to explain the process that I've already gone through in just a minute so as it stands now in order to be level I have about a two about a two inch rise which is more than I need more than enough that I need for this um, so at the end of the day when you're shaving off all your concrete you're just going to put your level at different spots and make sure that there's nothing hindering that there's no rocks that there's no concrete hindering anything that you're doing because eventually you're going to fill that in i'm going to explain that in a minute too 
So, uh, unfortunately, I was stuck with a Schluter drain, which I don't like Schluter. Everybody knows that that watches my channel. These have these flaps. I don't trust these flaps because this 3-inch overlap is meant to go onto another Schluter that sets here, and Fenset is used as a, as a um, glue. So that's supposed to be your waterproofing. But I don't trust them, so I'll eventually red guard. I'll still do, because I like the idea of using a small, a thinner shower pan liner. So in this case, I have a roll of this outside, and I will screed that on here. I will glue that on here once the floor is done. And then I will do this over flap thing, but then the whole thing will still inevitably get hold, the whole thing red guarded. If you remember, there was this big square going on here. Um, so I had to finagle the drain in such a way that I could transition it to it. We're at a foundation here. And the way foundations work, this is your foundation. This is all concrete. And then it turns. It kind of does this turn. So it's very, very thick concrete up to where your, this is your plate, your bottom plate. This is the outside, literally outside of the house. And for that reason, this concrete just kept going and going and going because of that curvature of your foundation to your slab. So there was no way that I was going to get down to grade level and um, make that transition. So anyway, long story short, a lot of things had to happen to make that drain fit. And it gets fitted um, by, via Schluter with a boot. And I made that happen yesterday, made sure this is level uh, to begin with, which it is. So that's level. And then there's a slight uh, pitch going on from the back of the wall. I'm not trying to get leveled this way. There's a slight pitch going this way. And then my tile will have this pitch so that water will be forced down from the wall and water will also be forced down from the floor. And so I set it, um, I set it in there, did a dry fit a couple, two or three times to make sure everything is right. And once I did that, then I got some quick setting mortar. Um, not what I would use for a shower pan necessarily, but, um, and I slopped it in that trough. Oh, by the way, yeah, I had to dig out a trough along there too with a jackhammer and a saw and all that stuff. And so that trough um, makes it so that that drain sits relatively flush at the top of here. Anyway, um, going forward, you mix your mortar pretty soupy. Um, you slop it in there, and then you push down your drain into that trough um, so that it's anchored well. And then, of course, I put concrete into that box that was there, too. So I think the whole bag went in there. Um, anyway, so yeah, now it's set overnight. Now it is anchored. It's not going anywhere. And the next step, and how you do your drain is different with every manufacturer. Um, the linear drains that I've done in the past have a little lip on the edge of it, which this one doesn't. And then you have your insert and all that stuff. So all I have to do is get my mortar flush with the bottom of that little lip because that lip will be my parameter for my tile and my fence set. Schluter is a whole different ball of wax, but the first step in this um, concrete subfloor is I'm going to wet it down, get a little bit wet because, you know, mortar wants to stick to something wet rather than dry. I've already vacuumed it out, um, and so then I'm going to mix up some thin set right out of the bag. I'm going to mix up some thin set, and I'm going to do what they call a slurry mix, so it's going to be really runny type of thin set because the thin set is going to stick to this um, concrete a lot better than just straight mortar, which I have ready also. And so you're kind of marrying the concrete to the mortar by virtue of that slurry mix. So the slurry mix is going to get slopped in here first, and then once I've done that, I'm going to mix up my mortar, set my mortar, just slop it in here up to the point where I want it. Hold on a second. And I have this old level. You could use any straight edge, really, but this old level will serve as my screed board. So that once my mortar is in here, all I have to do is follow that and that and, sorry, so up here and down there is what I'm dealing with. And all the mortar that I'm put, pulling this along will screed out perfectly. Well, not perfectly. I'll still have to manipulate a little bit. And I have my trowel and I have, yeah, I have a lot of other tools to kind of make this happen. That, that is a process. I can't show the process because I don't generally show my work.
this is the next day after the pour. When I say pour, screed, okay? To get technical, this will be a screed that you kind of sort of saw me do with my level, with my crappy level. And it doesn't matter what, what straight edge you use, um, as long as you're straight across from the back of the drain up to where the edge of your concrete ended or started, whichever you prefer. And it looks very pretty. I like it a lot. So, a good little slope, about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half, from there to there. Like I said this is a Schluter drain, so it has this fleece cover that encapsulates the whole drain. And now that everything is done, I can go ahead and use um, Finset because, ooh, I gotta knock that down a little bit too. Um, I can use Finset in the back of here. I'll just put Finset in the back of here, push that up against here, kind of thin set onto the wall. I'm gonna put in the scabbing, by the way, two by six scabbing will go up here. And so then I'll just press that into the thin set all the way along, all the way along the back, do a little fold in the corner, and then all the way on, onto the face, up onto the front, as it were. Um, so this will get thin set down to the finished floor. My next piece of curdy that I'm gonna lay down will be a solid piece that will overlap onto this probably right up to the edge here. Today we'll be doing my scab in pieces, my two by sixes all the way around, all the way around, so that I have a nice wall for my, yeah. And I'm gonna treat this same as I would a rubber membrane that I use it specifically only on um, shower curb, sorry, curbless shower installations on a slab. So I got the boards up and I didn't come on camera to show you my scabbing boards. I came on camera because I know somebody saw that crack and I haven't addressed it yet. Uh, last week I went ahead and marked out the crack came like this and all the way into the back. And you also saw it in the pan. I'm sure some of you noticed that all got filled in, beat up and all that stuff during that process. But I came in here with that crack and I got my uh, saw. Um, concrete saw and I cut at an angle and the crack was somewhere in the middle here so I cut at an angle took out a big chunk two angles here and here then I knocked out as much as I could out of that so I made the crack bigger basically I expanded the surface area of that crack and filled it in with quick setting mortar and uh, it will also be red guarded and tiled over and it will not crack again so I have my curdy onto my pan. I've overlapped a couple of times. I overlapped the flap that's over here. I overlapped my uh, curdy on top of that. I overlapped around my corners, both sides. I went up all the way to the top, and then I overlapped here, I think about five inches. And because it's such a large three-foot section, I just went out. Um, with the curdy out on the floor, which is okay. Um, this is going to get red guard probably mm, maybe, well, at least a coat, maybe two. Depends on how much I have left. I now have a completely waterproof shower. So sometimes I get questions about um, waterproofing and what backer board to use and yeah, I get a lot of questions. The idea in any application that you're doing is to think like water. If water could somehow get through, then you think like water and make that impossible to happen. Your shower, in theory, should be functional with no tile on it. Tile is not your waterproofer. That's your waterproofer, or any waterproofer you want to use. In this case, I always overkill on curbless showers because, obviously, if the drain backs up, it can go all the way back. Although that would be extremely rare and you would stop the shower and unclog the drain at that point. Um, but this is the whole point of uh, building a shower is that you waterproof everything. You know, the whole idea of water in, water out, cover your weep holes, blah, 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 is irrelevant when you do this thing alone, right? A couple little changes. There's going to be, I don't know if I mentioned it, a herringbone mosaic on the inside, inside, inset of here. Oh yeah, we put a window in too. And so they got waterproofed all the way inside of the perimeter. So this is the next day. Um, as you can see, I have set some of the tile 
but I couldn't go any further than this because the niche has to be set first. So um, a lot of times when I don't show my work, I show some tricks or some um, informational type of stuff um, because, you know, setting tile is not that big of a deal. Having said that, I use leveling clips whenever possible. Leveling clips and yes. These are used over and over and over, the shims. You don't have to use the proprietary clips if you can get them cheaper, which I have this cheaper. It's a little cheesier, but it still works with these wedges. As some of you that haven't watched my videos before, um, I use a ledger board. This tile is 12 by 24 nominal. I think it's 11 and 3 quarters, so I go up to about 11 and a half, um, and I put my ledger board up there. Without the tile on the floor, that's going to be a little bit more girth, but um, in the end you'll have 11 plus inches of your bottom row of tile and then of course the curve of shower being what it is, it will kind of taper down from that direction. Um, but the advantage of using a ledger board is that you can run all your tile, were it not for this and were it not for the window, you can run all your tile all the way up the wall day one or if it even takes you into day two, um, like it's going to take me, then so be it. The problem with a trim niche like this, as opposed to um, a profile type of niche with Schluter, where I can just go ahead and run my tile all the way up, when I frame in niches with any type of, in this case, pencil, or if I frame it out with bow nose, that has to be done first because the field tile wraps around it. So I had to get into this yesterday, and doing these niches takes, um, to do it right, takes usually about two hours. You're using all the tools at your disposal, which means levels, which means lasers, which means eyeballing, which means a lot of different things. But the end result is you want everything level. And I suggest every row you go up that you kind of ensure that everything is correct. Because if it's not, then you want to manipulate your tile by the second or third or fourth row um, to get everything straight. So, you know, the end result is that you have a nice um, shower. Because I know I'm doing Schluter on the edge here. If you can see, my thin set is shy probably about an inch, so I'm not spreading out my thin set all the way up to the edge there because I know I'm coming back in later with Schluter. So I keep a spare piece of Schluter on hand, make sure that I haven't gummed up that gap, make sure that I'm, I'm using this measurement for the end of my tile because you have another quarter inch or so left on here in order to be flush with your outside wall. So. I guess the trick I'm trying to show here is you can set your, your Schluter all the way up the wall if you want. In fact, I had to do it on this side only because I couldn't get into the door jam and they wanted it up against the door jam. So I had to kind of preset that, but that's not optimal. That's not what I like to do. I like to set it afterward so if there's any discrepancy um, in the wall, I can take up for that. Whereas you can't if you glue it like ahead of time. A couple hours later and I have my tile set where I need it on this back wall but um, I did run into a trick that um, I did the same thing with the niche Ooh, got some thin set. I did the same thing with the niche in order to hold up this top row I put a 24 inch level across the top and I shimmed it with a couple pieces of tile cut accordingly which is the same thing I did here except I used one by two and then I had the shim sitting on the top of it so that I can get those top rows sitting on, on top to dry overnight. This is a rubbing stone. And with a rubbing stone, you can take off these little cut edges. I have a new blade on this saw, but this particular tile um, always gives me problems with the edge. And so with the rubbing stone, Kind of take it at a 45 degree angle and it gets off most of the um, when you're doing a curbless shower it's almost always recommended i can't think of very few exceptions where you would not do your floor tile proper first before you do your inside uh, shower tile do your floor tile your exterior floor tile first and try and get a little bump up on it so that you have a good transition um, you can go flat you can go flat and level on this but um, it gives you a little bit more rise if you just bump it up slightly. Um, then the rest of it could be level as this floor is level all the way across. Um, but make sure that first row, that first row is going to dictate everything that follows. Um, so yeah, that's probably the most important thing 
that I can tell you going forward, um, and as I do with all my showers, um, my first row goes last. So after all this is set um, and dried up and all that stuff and grouted, then I will set my first tile last, and that will make it so that water sheds off and onto the floor tile. So they decided to do a mosaic in the center here, but as most mosaics are always thinner than the field tile around it, you have to bump it out. So if we were doing, say, a border on a wall or something like that, you would put a quarter inch hardy or quarter inch, some type of backer board on there to bump out the wall in order for a mosaic that's thinner to fit and be flush. In this case, I chose Dietra only because it's already waterproof. Now this mosaic, I have about an eighth of an inch or so of thin set that I can put on here, which is all I want to put on here anyway. Just push it down into the Dietra and it'll work out perfectly. A little bit more build up back here. Maybe about a quarter of an inch, but I'll screed out some thin set in this direction to make that work as well. That anytime you do any shower, not just a curbless shower, you should grout before you set your last tile. So the grout will get it pushed up into that crack, that void that you left in the back. It doesn't matter that it's smoothed out because it will never be seen and never be used. Um, but yeah, push that grout back inside where the tile meets the liner. Um, and then just kind of sponge off the excess. Um, and then also grout, you know, the inset if you're gonna do an inset like this. Yeah, so all the walls are grouted and I am ready to start setting the bottom tile. Your bottom row of tile, as I said, your first row goes last. So, once this is um, cut, it is ready to be set in there. So you're gonna go, you know you're gonna have about an eighth of an inch grout line, plus you want about an eighth of an inch at the bottom. So you're gonna mark that right at about a quarter. See that? Then, where these match up, you're gonna give this a quarter also. So a little quarter of an inch cut right there. Turn it above the sand, and you can transfer that mark to the edge. Flip that around. Try to transfer this mark to the edge. And because these are glossy tile, I'm going to come in with a magic marker to mark my front. I'm doing all of this recording and everything one-handed. Okay. So. It should be pretty obvious by now what the end result is going to be. You get a straight edge of any kind and you just go from end to end. That's it. Once you cut that, you're going to end up with this piece I just took off. Right? See those two cuts right there? I did that on over here and this cut already. So this one is what that is exactly. You see that? Fits on there perfectly. Now, Think about that. You got to think about that. You're measuring from this side when you lay it down on the floor and you transfer your mark. It's really that easy. Where I marked it, and there's your quarter inch. Quarter inch all the way across. Gives you enough room for your little eighth inch spacing here, eighth inch spacing here, and you're good to go. And that's how you do, that's how you do the cuts the way I do it with the ledger board. If you weren't doing it with the ledger board, yeah, it's then measuring. You're just measuring top to bottom, measuring top to bottom, and hoping for the best. So, I wish I had better light. I don't have my drop light here anymore, and the lighting is limited. Um, we put in a new window, 
we put in a white Schluter trim. Um, so this is a marble mosaic, obviously, trimmed out with the marble um, pencil, larger pencil. Um, he had a square, he had a square arm that goes in there, and he didn't tell me ahead of time. <laughs> so he's going to have to order a, a rounded one for that shower head to fit. Um, he has a diverter, the um, mixer, and I think it's a volume control also. And he has a slider bar, which he hasn't put in yet. So a nipple will go on the inside of there, and the bar will go on there. There will be a hose there, and it's going to be a replication on the other side with the slider, the hose, and um, the new stuff. In fact, this is the last one in stock, so he still has this on back order. Um, but yeah, it's looking very, very sharp. It is nine foot tall, so rather large. We also use the, um, the white schluter on the top all the way around and down the side here. So yeah, turned out really well. Um, this darker tile that they decided to do the inset of this um, herringbone for. For basically, basically the, the tile when it's wet is a little bit slippery so they just decided they would do something a little less slippery. And that's why this ended up going in here. And I do not like herringbone, no I do not, even though it's on a mat, all these little tiny cuts around the perimeter is a real pain. And then we get to um, the six foot long linear drain, which is um, accessed by this little tool. When you pull it up, there's your drain and your basket. And yeah, so I like it. Um, so yeah, it needs a little buffing off of the haze, but other than that, um, it's done. And um, quite the project. Um, right at the doorway, it slopes there, and then it's straight otherwise. Um, but yeah, I just finished grouting, and I'm out of here. Um, it was quite the project, but I like the outcome a lot. Hey, if you enjoyed that video and you learned something, consider being a Patreon member. Five, ten, fifteen dollars a month would help me greatly produce more videos. I make nothing up from YouTube at all. If you're going to call me for advice, please donate fifty dollars for thirty minutes. My link to my PayPal and my Patreon account is down below. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so you get immediate notifications as soon as I post videos. And thank you very much for your support.